that was an intro to our new series uh, that we are going to start uh, this Sunday. Um, just looking back, um, uh, God has been faithful to the three of us uh, who has been uh, going through different series uh, for study. We started with the book of Ephesians. Uh, we talked about the Sermon on the Mount, uh, studied the book of Acts, uh, the book of James. Uh, oh, and then we studied the New and Living Way series. And we took a little bit of a break last few months. And we, uh, trusting in God, we are hoping to uh, launch a new series to study. And uh, the title is Looking Unto Jesus. Um, and it's a little bit of an amb ambitious uh, topic because we are going to talk about uh, Jesus himself. And if you'll go uh, with me to the next slide, I will talk a little bit about the outline first. Hopefully you can see that. A lot of words on there. I apologize for that. But that's the outline for uh, the series. And this is a topic we hope to cover. First, we will discuss a few uh, uh, forerunners, select few forerunners in the Old Testament that foreshadowed Christ um, and was an example of Christ in the Old Testament. Then we'll talk about his birth and early life, uh, his teachings and parables, his miracles, and his calling of disciples. Um, and then we'll talk about his work on the cross, what it meant, why he died on the cross, his resurrection and ascension, uh, his priesthood, ministry of his priesthood and intercession, and then finally his judgment uh, and co uh, coming back, or his him being a judge and coming king, and then we'll end or conclude with the role of the church uh, in following Christ. So that is kind of a high-level overview. We will dive deeper into certain of some of those, and um, and take a kind of some detours into some, uh, some of those topics, and, but we'll try to stay on the topic and not get too, uh, too far from kind of the overall topic, which is Christ. And us studying, even though we've studied a lot of things, we wanted to spend this year studying about uh, Jesus himself and what his life on earth meant, means for us. Um, and uh, really, and it's really an... Uh, 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 an ordination by God because I, I believe uh, you know we've uh, received other confirmations why this was uh, from God but also even you know we talked about apologetics uh, last weekend and and that was a blessing uh, for us as well uh, but I believe that God and then Joel spoke about Christ and his birth uh, over the uh, the weekend of Christmas and I believe all of this God has been preparing us kind of just you know, plowing the ground a little bit as we kind of launch into this series um, is about Jesus himself. So hopefully you I welcome you to join with us and to stay on track. Uh, we will be studying uh, not every single gospel, but studying the gospels together, comparing them, but also not, not just the gospel, but reaching back into the epistles and other books of the Bible to show you know, what Christ did for us, what and who is Christ. So I'm uh, excited about it, and hopefully uh, you will share in my, our excitement and pray for us. Really, I mean, it's a very ambitious topic, so um, I myself not sure, you know, what all we learn from this, so I invite your prayers. And so uh, so let's, let's uh, so today I'm just going to give a little bit of an introduction uh, to the series itself. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of those uh, any of those specific topics today. So I'm going to jump right into the key verse underlying this topic, which is Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 2. But I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Now that verse is, I mean, these two verses, I mean, is so power-packed and has so many, you know, underlying meaning and his, history uh, with regards to scripture that, you know, that's why we chose this as kind of the key verse. Um, and so I just want to cover that a little bit. If you go to the next slide, the first thing I want to say is the coming of Jesus, and we know this is just a reminder, it is not an accident. Jesus just didn't, you know, scoop in to save humanity because, uh, because you know, Adam sinned, right? It was weaved together um, uh, by God through the, even before the world began. That's why when we say looking unto Jesus, which is the name of our topic, at all times, as we live in this world, right, we have to look at the past, and I'll come and go through each of those. The past, what, did that, what happened before with regards to Christ? What is now? What does that mean for my life today? What does it mean for me today? And then what does, me, what does it mean for me future? So looking into G, unto Jesus in the past, looking unto Jesus today, and looking unto Jesus tomorrow and in the future beyond that, right? So let's go into each of those real quick. So the first part of it, looking unto Jesus from the past. So there is, of course, an element of our own personal experience with regards to Jesus looking into past, into the past, right? We can say, when I look back, I can see the hand of God in my life. I, I can remember when I first believed in him for my salvation. I can remember those times when I really needed him and he saved me, right? We know that he has etched in our memory these milestones or landmarks, right, of our life where he has become real to us if you have this faith in Christ. So we run this race or we move forward in our Christian life always remembering the past. The, psalm, the psalmist says what? That, you know, uh, he says, I remember your mercies when I'm troubled, when I'm overcome with distress. I remember your judgments from times past. I remember when you have been a, prese a present help, when you are right there with me. So we look unto Jesus reaching back into the past for our own lives. But I invite you to go even beyond that and understand that we are, yes, a small piece in the overall plan, but when we think about this, we should be overjoyed or overflowing with emotion when he loved us so much that, you know, just like this jigsaw puzzle, we were one of those puzzle pieces, you know? That's what we just read that when Christ decided he'll have to die on the cross, he thought of you. You can put your name there. Amen? Amen. He thought of me. Yes. That, I'm gonna, that is worth it to endure that shame because I have the joy of being with Pastor John Verges or Justin or anybody here, I don't, Alan or anybody here. I want to call, I can call everybody here. I will endure the cross, that shame and suffering, because the joy beyond that is worth the suffering. Amen? Amen? So we look unto Jesus for the past because of his. But it is not an accident that it happened. Right? Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, um, and we know this verse, I'm just going to read it quickly. Having known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. That this has been this mystery of God's plan that was not revealed outwardly to mankind or even the angelic beings. God did not reveal how he will redeem mankind. But he gave the promise the instant at Adam's sin that the son of the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Amen? That he gave the promise 
that it will come. But that plan was put into place even before that. He had all these things come into place through history, through the history of mankind. He has weaved together the, the plan that he had in his heart, which was God himself to die for the salvation of mankind. Amen? And as Joel was speaking, he was talking about all the different religions and all the other faiths that are practiced in this world. You know, he gave this picture of an elephant that each faith sees a little piece of maybe it started with a little piece of what uh, the true God is, but they made it a false religion, right? But God has given us a picture of his whole plan, of the whole elephant in his scripture, that his plan was to save us, that he loved us so much that... All the other religions were men who were made as gods. But what we believe is in a God who became a man. Amen? God belittled himself to become a man. So that he could die in our place. Amen? This is the plan of God. This is the mystery of his will. This is what we look back into. And we can see... You know, we can prove all of these things through all the prophecies that were fulfilled and all these the things that we see in nature. I mean, we can study a messianic prophecy. You can, you know, people say there are 200 to 400 prophecies of Christ fulfilled at his coming. So many ways to understand, but never was fully revealed until he came. But now we can look back and see, oh my God, wow, this is so clearly written that this was supposed to happen this way. It is not an accident, my brother, dear brothers and sisters, that Christ came. We look unto this Jesus who came not by accident. We look unto Jesus who came with purpose and with intention because of his love for each one of you. Amen? Each one of us, he loved so much, he was willing to go through that. Even That's why he told Peter, you know, he didn't want his... Jesus to die, his teacher to die in the garden. So in his zeal, he drew a sword and cut off the ear of the, uh, of the servant of the priest, high priest. And what did Jesus say? Should I not drink of the cup my father has given me to drink? Amen. He was not willing to not go through this. Because even to save Peter himself, he had to go through that. Amen. He had to drink of the cup. He God in every second of his life in the world. And in doing that, he reversed the curse of Adam. Amen? His obedience reversed the disobedience of the first Adam. The last Adam reversed the condemnation that the first Adam brought. Amen? It was all in his plan. So we will study the, looking back, we will study, that's what the Hebrew writer said, the forerunner, uh, the great cloud of witnesses, right? And, and he's talking about the great cloud of witnesses that he mentions in chapter 11, right? And we'll study a few, not all of them, we'll take a few weeks to study a few of them, um, and like Abel or Moses and, and Abraham, others, how they foreshadowed Christ. Right, so you have the messianic prophecies, but also you can see the the Christ revealed in each of these faithful men and women of God. The the Christ is so inherent in Scripture, so inherent in nature and in our own lives. You know, we just have to open our eyes to see. So let's look unto Jesus for the past. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. The second part is. Looking unto Jesus in the present. So if you read, um, uh, let us actually read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse uh, 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the price. So run that ye may obtain. I'm just going to go ahead and read also Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. 
For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So, so this is talking about today, your life today. And, and Paul gives the example of running a race and finishing a race. And we all know, you know, uh, so there's different types of races or competitions that we can think about or sports. I will just use the example of a marathon, right? So there's a sprint and a marathon, right? I would view or compare the Christian life to a marathon. A sprint both require a lot of training and a lot of, you know, uh, discipline and, and kind of dietary uh, restrictions and all these things. But a marathon goes for a long time. What, in fact, 26.1 miles uh, or two miles, 26.2 uh, maybe. Um, so, so, but if you're a marathon runner, you know the training that you require, right? But you could do all that training and on the day of the race, you might, you know, have unfavorable weather condition or something happen on mile 15 or 16 and you just fall and drop out of the race, right? And you didn't finish the race. So Paul is saying, run the race. And many people run the race, but only one receives the prize. So as I was thinking about this, <coughs> um, I was wondering, okay, so does this mean, I don't know, how many people do we have? 400, let's say, people in Hebron and, you know, millions of Christians in the world. Are we, are we, is Paul saying all of us are running this race and only one person can win? I was like, that, that does not make sense. That goes against what the gospel says. Then I realized that the only winner in this race is Christ. Amen? The one who won the race is Christ. The one who finished the race is Christ. Everybody else is running, but they're running an unwinnable race because he was not in Christ. So when, when we think about that, what does that mean? How are we running the race? You have to go back to Jesus' high priestly prayer in the garden. John chapter 17. If you study this, and then John chapter 15. If you study all of these together, you can see what he's praying. He's saying, Father, as you and I are one, show my disciples that you and I are one. And then, as you and I are one, let me and them be one. So we're not competing against each other to win this race. We are merely joining with Christ so that we might finish the race that Christ ran. Amen? We are, he ran the race on our behalf. He said the work is finished on the cross. So through the strength that he had, we are drawing strength to finish the race. We, you can ride, try running this race without him. You will never finish it. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he said, I am the way. I am the door. Amen. It's not, uh, you, know, uh, you know, being near him or being around him. No, it's not about being, uh, you know, a part of church. It is being in him. Being one with Christ. And Christ growing daily in you is how you win the race. So all of us, anybody, the door is wide open to anybody. So there is not a competition between you or I. There is no difference between you or I. Anybody who is willing to accept this grace can win this race. Amen. And that's why Paul could say what? I have finished the race. I have finished the course. Amen. But he was not saying that he himself, but in Christ, he finished the course. Amen? So yeah, if you ran on your own strength, you might fall apart at mile 16 or even mile 25, right? But because you're in Christ, if you're one with Christ, you can finish that race. With, and not only finish the race somehow, but being your last mile being better than the first mile. It's growing stronger and stronger. You know, most of the worldly marathoners, right? They're, 
you know, their strength is failing and diminishing towards the end, right? And they make it, even the best marathoners are making it. But a Christian is actually growing stronger and stronger. Just like at the wedding, the wine that was served second was better than the first because we are drinking of this new wine. And it's replenishing our strength and Christ is growing in us and our patience is growing in us to finish this race. Amen? You all with me? That's why Romans, uh, it says, the um, uh, chapter 8, he says, Shall anything separate us from the love of God? Shall famine or sword or pestilence or sickness, anything? You know, this, the terrain is very treacherous as we run this race. It's very treacherous. You might go through sicknesses. You might go through poverty or famine or, or just you might go through times where you fall down because of your sin and you stumble. And you, 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 know, you just fall away from the course and you wander and you get lost. But as soon as you realize that you went off course and you cry out to God, he immediately picks you up and puts you back on the race. Amen. Just like the prodigal son, as soon as the father saw my son is coming, he ran to him and brought him back. Amen? Amen. So don't be discouraged. Don't be disheartened. Take courage in that the strength of Christ is your strength. Amen? The power of Christ is your power in what you rest in. You're not running this race in your strength. You're running this race through the power of Christ. Amen? And that's what we want to study when we study the series about Christ himself. What did he teach? What was his life? How is that an example for us? So looking unto Jesus in, in the present, it is a marathon and not a race, uh, and not a sprint. Okay, so, and I'll, I'll just conclude in the last part, which is looking unto Jesus uh, in the future. And we can see, um, we can see many things, uh, you know, if you go back to prophecy, uh, we can see many things being fulfilled in our own lifetime today, right? But I don't know when the things Jesus spoke about or the, John spoke about in Revelation uh, will come true. You know, I don't know the dates uh, or the year or month or whatever, right? Uh, but I do know that it will come true. Amen? Amen? I do know that the promise he has made will happen. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, that verse I read earlier, um, uh, verse 37 says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Amen? Amen. He will come in the time appointed. So we have to run the race looking at the past and looking at today, uh, in the moment today, right? But we have to run the race with that hope, right? We're not running in vain. We're not running so that we can live out certain, you know, principles or, you know, be uh, just so that we can be a good Christian, right? We're running the race so that we can be with Christ. Amen? Amen? In the end of that race. This race will end in the, uh, at one day. Just like the forefathers we talked about, you know, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, all of those people ran the race and they said they didn't look back on the place they came from because they might have gone back, right? But they ran and they didn't receive the price. But we have, we received the price in our lifetime, which is Christ in us, amen? They ran this race without even knowing uh, the true Christ yet. But they ran with faith. So, but we have this experience of having Christ in our heart, right? So we run with patience and we run looking to Christ, unto Jesus for the future. Amen? This hope, this glorious hope should be our guiding light. Our guiding uh, strength that one day all of these things will pass away. Amen. You know, all of these things that we are enduring today. All this, and the worship team, please come uh, forward. Um, all of these things that we're enduring today will pass away. And what we are believing in faith will be made true. Just like I always like to talk about Revelation chapter 5 and the experience that um, uh, John had in that vision of we will see the lamb that was slain 
you know, and what he did for us. At the same time, we will see the vision of this glorious king sitting on the throne, but also have the revelation of the lamb that died and that was slain for us. Amen? Covered in blood. This hope that we have will become reality one day. And so we look unto Jesus to run this race so that this will, um, uh, this will be made real in our lives. Amen? So that we can have a true understanding of the sacrifice he had to have on the cross uh, to, to save each one of us. And um, I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to be brave enough to sing this Malayalam song, but I'm going to give it a shot. If you know it, sing along with me. <clears throat> Just to remind us of that hope. Marukareil nam kandidum Marubileai tannavane Swarna teruvil Vindum karnum Priyareya dinatil Munateru will Vindum karnum Priyareya dinatil Muravilium Dukavumilla Putteneru shale Nagara Madil Pon Puri O to chair no Poneshu in a Pugarta Puleri O to chair no Poneshu in a Pugarta Marukare na kandidum maruvile ai tannavane swarna teruvil vindum kaanum priyare adinathil swarna teruvil Vindum kaanum priyare adinathil Praise the Lord. That is our hope. That we will see this Jesus who gave himself a ransom for us. Amen. On that streets of gold, we will see this lamb that has shed his blood for us. His name is glorified. Amen.